we look at the generalized version of LFP. So the generalized version of LFP is the, as the name suggests, it is the more general version where the chain scooper transform will not work and we will not be able to obtain a linear programming problem. In fact, the problem is not convex. So there is no transformation which will allow us to obtain a convex problem. So the generalized LFP can be written as min over x max over i ci transpose x plus di divided by ei transpose x plus fi. Right, so this maximum over i is what we are minimizing and then the constraints can be gx less than equal to h and ax equal to b. Now the first thing when we are trying to solve uh, generalized LFP is observe that we cannot obviously transform this as y equal to x divided by ei transpose x plus fi because i is different. So we cannot do that chain scooper transform. Instead, let us simply apply the epigraph trick and see what, what we obtain. So if we apply the epigraph trick, then we obtain minimize over x comma t, t and the objective function, the maximum of this is less than equal to t. So we obtain ci transpose x plus di divided by ei transpose x plus fi less than equal to t and the other constraints remain the same. So gx is less than equal to h and ax is equal to p. And at the same time remember that both of these have implicit constraint that ei transpose x plus fi is greater than 0. So this is the implicit constraint or these are the implicit constraints. But anyway, let us think about how we can solve this. How we can solve this problem. Note that t is an optimization variable here. So this constraint, this particular constraint is not a convex constraint because whenever we talk about convexity, we have to look at it in terms of x and t jointly. So in terms of x and t jointly, this is not necessarily a convex constraint. In fact, I must point out that this function gi of x given by ci transpose x plus di divided by ei transpose x plus fi is neither convex nor concave. So this function is neither convex nor concave and hence uh, you cannot apply any of the techniques that we have learned so far. Uh, however, the interesting fact about this function is that it is quasi-convex. So if you remember, what is a quasi-convex function? It's a function whose sublevel sets are convex. So a sublevel set of this function is given by the set of all x such that gi. So we are talking about ci of alpha. So gi of x is less than or equal to alpha. Remember, this was the definition of the sublevel set and this would be written as so this is for a given alpha for given value of alpha so x such that ci transpose x plus di divided by ei transpose x plus fi is less than equal to alpha now we can modify this by observing that this requirement can be written as the set of all x such that ci minus alpha times ei remember again that alpha is given transpose x plus di minus alpha times fi is less than equal to zero so therefore this is a linear inequality in x and therefore the sublevel set is a convex in fact it is a half space for a given alpha. So for a given alpha, this is a half space. So in other words, the set of all x that satisfy this constraint 
is convex. So that's interesting because the function is quasi-convex, the set of all x that satisfy this constraint is convex. Note of course that the set of all x comma t that satisfy this constraint is not convex. I am only talking about the set of all x that satisfy this constraint. But how can we utilize this fact to our advantage? So in fact we can talk about a general quasi-convex optimization problem. So quasi-convex optimization problem is more general than con convex optimization problem. So a general quasi-convex optimization problem would be written as minimize some g0 of x such, such that fi of x less than equal to 0 and ax equal to b these are convex while g0 is quasi-convex and to handle it what we have to do is write it as so we have to write it as minimize t so x comma t with respect to t g0 of x less than equal to t fi of x less than equal to 0 and ax equal to b and uh, observe that this set we are hoping that this set because g0 of x is convex quasi convex this set is a convex set in x for a given t right so the problem is actually convex if t was fixed right if the t was fixed then i would have found the solution of this problem but it is it is not fixed so let's take uh, another example we can basically take g0 of x to be equal to p of x divided by q of x where p of x is convex and q of x is concave and both are positive both are positive in that case you can observe that the sublevel set of g0 of x is given by set of all x such that px divided by qx is less than equal to alpha which can be written as the set of all x such that px minus alpha q of x is less than equal to 0. So this is for alpha positive because we assume that everything is positive. So for alpha positive this is convex and minus alpha qx is also convex. So we are adding convex functions so convex less than equal to 0 and therefore this set is convex. Right so for alpha greater than 0 this set is also convex. So here I have demonstrated that if you have a quasi-convex objective then most of the time you can write it for a fixed alpha or for a fixed t you can write the constraint in a form that it is actually a convex less than equal to a constant or zero type of thing and then how do we solve it so the our observation is that so our observation is that problem is convex for a given t So whenever the function g0 of x is quasi-convex we are relying on the fact that we can find some phi t of x less than equal to 0. We can write g0 of x less than equal to t where g0 is quasi-convex as phi t of x less than equal to 0 where phi t is convex in x for a given so in the case of linear fractional phi t was linear and in this case phi t was convex. So what happens if we fix t? So let us say that we fix t then the problem becomes very simple because once t is fixed we don't have to minimize it anymore. We just have to find an x such that this phi t of x less than equal to 0 is satisfied and the other constraints are also satisfied fi of x less than equal to 0, ax equal to b. And this we have already seen this is a convex feasibility problem. So this is a convex 
feasibility problem and how do we find the t at which we can we need to fix this so observe that so let's say that this problem is called pt for a fixed value of t so what will happen if we consider p of minus infinity can we consider p of minus infinity in other words t is minus infinity if t is minus infinity then there is no way that this constraint which was equivalent to g naught of x less than or equal to t and t is minus infinity which means that it would have to be very very small so there is no way that this would be satisfied so this problem would become infeasible and p equal to infinity it would actually be feasible because it is very easy to satisfy this so this problem will become feasible and going from minus infinity to infinity at there is some point where the problem is becoming from infeasible to infeasible right so there is some point between minus infinity and infinity where the problem is becoming feasible and that is the point that we need to find so if we can do that we can find the point t at which the problem just becomes feasible then we would have solved and this is nothing but a single dimension problem single dimensional problem and generally single dimensional problems or scalar uh, problems scalar va variable problems are simpler than n dimensional problems and generally you can use various methods for example this is a scenario where you can use bisection so we can use bisection to find t because generally single variable problems are simpler so remember this always so for example we could again so you already know bisection but i can just revise this here we can say that there is a given l such that it less than t star let's say that t star is the optimal value of t and there is a u which is greater than t star so we have been successful so far let's say in finding an l and u which such that t star lies between l and u but we don't know where then we can search it by setting t equal to l plus u by 2 then we can solve pt now there are two scenarios t could be too small and could be infeasible so if it is infeasible then what we need to do is we set l equal to t and if it is feasible then we can set u equal to t so if we solve pt there are two possibilities feasible or infeasible and according to that we can just shift our search region or half our search region to that particular half and we can basically continue this until u minus l is less than some epsilon and we already know that the complexity of or the number of iterations it would require would be log of 1 over epsilon right so this is the number of iterations so that's the problem and in this each iteration we need to solve a convex problem right so the idea here is that we solve we can solve a convex problem easily and therefore we can solve a quasi convex problem one where the objective is quasi convex by solving a series of convex problems so if convex problem is easy then the quasi convex problem is not much difficult it is just you need to solve some convex problems or log 1 over epsilon number of convex problems so to summarize the generalized LFP that we saw can be written as or can be solved by solving the series of linear programming problems, linear feasibility problems, which take the form find t subject to ci plus t times ei transpose x minus di minus t times fi less than or equal to 0 gx is less than or equal to h and ax equal to b and of course the implicit constraint that ei transpose x plus fi 
is greater than 0. Right? So finding this or solving this feasibility problem, oh, it should be not find t, it should be find x. So by solving this feasibility problem, uh, log 1 over epsilon times, we can actually solve the generalized LFP. So essentially the idea is that when you have a convex problem, you use some software such as CVX to solve it. And then when you have a quasi-convex problem, you solve it using a series of convex problems. And that series is not very long. It is just log 1 over epsilon. So if epsilon is 10 raised to the power minus 3, which is accuracy until which you want to solve it, then log 1 over epsilon would be something like 10. So you have to solve 10 convex problems instead of 1 for quasi-convex. So quasi-convex problems are slightly harder than convex problems.